fall usually means all about shad. A time of year when the fish really feed up heavily on shads. So a crankbait is a great way to catch them. You know, fall fishing can be some of the best fishing of the year. It's one of my most favorite times. It's the time of year when the fish really start to come back shallow and they also really feed up heavily on shad. So those together go hand in hand with fishing a crankbait. I kind of define fall fishing as September through, let's say November. Crankbaits are really a good way to find fish because what happens, fall usually means all about shad. Crankbaits provide the right setups for whatever types of covers and depths that you're fishing. Early in the fall, the fish are scattered out. You have some fish that have come up shallow. You always have fish that are shallow, but you also have fish that are still deep in their summertime uh, setups as well. So early in the fall, September, the fish are a little bit more scattered, but that's a good time to find them still out deep on their summer places. You might not find the numbers that you would, let's say in May or June, but in September, you're gonna still have some fish out deep and you can still catch some on deep diving crankbaits. Fall is all about just finding those fish that are scattered. Deep diving crankbaits can be a great way. I mean, they could, depending on the lake that you're fishing, I mean, heck, I've caught fish that time of year in 20 to 30 foot deep, but I've also caught fish in two foot of water that time of year. So it's really diverse. When it comes to uh, the deep diving crankbaits, it's important with, well, on the equipment you use. Most deep diving crankbaits are gonna say on the package that they dive, let's say, 20 foot deep that's usually based around 10 pound line so if you put it on 12 or 14 or 16 probably about every two pounds of line size that bigger diameter that bait's not going to dive as deep obviously the lighter the line the deeper the bait's going to go usually for me uh, it's anywhere from 10 to 16 pound uh, gamma fluorocarbon I, heck i've even thrown deep diving crankbaits on eight pound line so don't be afraid to put them on that light line. As long as you're confident in your line and the equipment you're using, uh, you can get you a couple extra feet as well. And hey, don't forget, kneeling and reeling can be a great way to get a couple extra feet down there deeper as well. Rod selection on this is really important too. Here I've got one here. This is a deep diving one, that big monster bill on there. You know, if you have it on the wrong setup, it'll wear you out. If you have it on too light of a setup, the rod can't handle those baits. This one can handle it. This is the deep crankbait. It's a seven foot 10. The specs on this sucker, it's a moderate action, medium, medium power, which is a big key for crankbaits. But this is 10 to 30 pounds. So it, it tells you how much heavier and half ounce to two ounce uh, crankbaits as well. So this thing can handle it. When you've got that big heavy crankbait on there, you've got that soft tip. When I fire that thing out there, I can really load that rod up and I can throw that thing a mile. I've got it on the, uh, new capstan 300 this is a five to one gear ratio reel five to, uh, five four to one gear ratio reel uh, this thing can hold a lot of line but if you're throwing those big magnum crankbaits out there a mile having a big reel is kind of an important part of that because you can really launch it with this big rod big reel that slower gear ratio you can take a a big magnum crankbait and crank it all day long and keep it down there in the strike zone where those big fish live but also at this time you have fish that are starting to follow the shad. The shad are starting to migrate into the bigger creeks and up on the flats, and that's where your medium and shallow diving crankbaits come into play. Uh, medium diving crankbaits are exactly that. They dive to medium depths, I'd say anywhere from uh, five to 10 foot. Uh, medium diving crank are great for, for rocky points, for, for steeper banks, for standing timber, or, or deeper parts of a flat. So there is a period where a medium diving crankbait can, can be a big player. Medium diving crankbaits, I love the Casking crankbait rod. Uh, this is the, the Speed Demon Pro, the seven foot crankbait. You can still use it for those square bills, but all your kind of medium diving crankbaits is what I would describe it as. So the specs on this one are a moderate action, medium power, eight to 17 pound line, one quarter to three quarter ounce baits. Uh, I really like this one, like I said, for, uh, medium crankbaits. We've got uh, a little medium diving bait right here. Uh, great little bait. I can fire, I can throw this thing a mile. I have this on the uh, Royal Legend Elite. This one is a, uh, a five, three to one. And if you're new to crankbait fishing, I really uh, recommend to people, especially when you get into medium and deep diving crankbaits to go with a uh, 
slower gear ratio reel. And what, what that does for you is, is you can feel the bait a lot more. It gives you, the higher you go in gear ratio, the less feel you have of that bait. And with experience, those subtleties, you notice it more. But with the, the slower gear ratio, that was a big key for me learning how to crankbait fish. So for medium and deep diving crankbaits, I prefer the slower gear ratio reel plus it helps you keep that, that steady retrieve as well. And it doesn't wear you out as much as a faster gear ratio reels. Last but not least is shallow fishing. We all love to fish shallow. This is probably the biggest diversity when it comes to crankbaits. You got lipless crankbaits, you got square bills, you got wake baits, you know, and all those fit into that category of crankbaits. For me, I love a square bill. I mean, I've won a ton of money on them. My very first boat I ever won was on a square bill crankbait in the fall. Uh, it's just a, a way to really cover a ton of water. You can fish them fast. They're great. You know, a lot of them are really weedless or, or you can fish them around wood and re deflect off of wood and all that. This is where it's important to uh, change the gear ratio some. Either the Bassinator Elite 8 4 to 1 or the Speed Demon. The Speed Demon's super fast. So if you're really wanting to burn something, that Speed Demon's the way to go. You know, rod selection on this is really important too. Uh, you know, each type of crankbait requires a little bit different rod to, to fish it most effectively. So what we've got here, we have the uh, Speed Demon Pro square bill crankbait rod. If you look at the specs on this one, it's a moderate action, medium power, 10 to 20 pound line, half to one ounce of baits. When it comes to fishing square bill crankbaits, I prefer, uh, this is the uh, Bassinator Elite 8 to 1 gear ratio reel, like a, a faster gear ratio for square bills anywhere from 15 to 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon line. This rod being only 6 8 made for close quarters. Uh, uh, you're in there making short little casts, maybe around lay downs or docks or something like that. But a big part of a crankbait rod is that soft tip. The two biggest reasons you want that soft tip are is when you're working that, that, uh, that crankbait along, when you do hook that fish is on a soft tip rod, when that fish is pulling, you know, treble hooks sometimes don't, fish, don't hook the fish as good as, uh, let's say, a flipping hook or something. So if there's nothing that gives, you got a really stiff rod and that fish is maybe barely skin hooked and he shakes, it's gonna come off. Where if you have that soft tip, that tip allows that fish to kind of pull on there and not come off as well. Plus, when you're making long casts, you load that rod up, that tip will load up and throw that bait much, much farther as well. So the 6.8 square bill is really good for square bill crankbaits, but you know, there's a lot of little finesse crankbaits out there on the market as well that that rod's really good for also. Uh, a 1.5 or 2.5 square bill is probably one of the best shad imitators out there. You can cover a lot of water. They catch numbers of fish. They catch big fish. And, uh, you know, it's a great just cover water, beat in the bank type of deal. You can fish them fast. They're great. You know, a lot of them are really weedless or, or you can fish them around wood and re deflect off of wood and all that lay downs to docks to rocks to mud to gravel whatever it is a square bill is great and will catch fish around it sometimes you get on a lake that's had a tremendous amount of pressure all year long and you got to come out with a way to to get those fish to, to bite and you always hear us pros talk about reaction strikes a crankbait is a great way to get reaction strikes a lot of times you'll see us you'll see the pros you're working a bait real real fast you're jerking it well you're making that bait do erratic things that's coming by real fast because a lot of times those fish might not be feeding, but they'll react. And if something's coming by real, real fast and erratic, they're gonna at least swipe at it and react to it. And that's where a crankbait can be real, real effective, especially on, on a square bit. I've seen times where they want that bait burned super, super fast. I've seen that in, in, in situations where it's clearer water or a lot of heavy fishing pressure. Most people don't go that extra mile and uh, use a super high speed reel and burn those baits by them. So you can really get those baits to do erratic things and get those fish to react when they won't do it in other times. So uh, sometimes high speed's all the, all the deal there as well. Sometimes it might take multiple casts by a specific target to finally trigger that fish to bite, but it's hard to beat a, a crankbait, especially a square bill day in and day out for catching those fish. But lipless crankbaits for me are usually on 16 or 20 pound uh, uh, gamma fluorocarbon, or I've been known to swap them up and put them on uh, 30 or 40 pound braid as well. If you're, if you're fishing vegetation, you want to rip it through, it can be a great way to fish a lipless crankbait as well. Next in the lineup is uh, your lipless cranking rod, which that kind of describes it, your lipless crankbaits. 
this one, the specs on it, this one's a little bit heavier. This is a, a moderate action, medium uh, power, 8 to 17 pound line, 3 eighths to 1 and a half ounce uh, uh, crankbaits as well. But uh, this one's primarily for your lipless crankbaits. Lipless crankbaits a lot, you're fishing in, in vegetation. So this one has more backbone to it. But your lipless crankbaits, this one's great for it. But a big key on lipless crankbaits, that's where you want to go with, uh, with your high speed reels. This is the uh, 8 to 1, uh, 8 1 to 1 Bassinator Elite. Another uh, good choice for uh, lipless crankbaits is uh, the uh, Speed Demon Pro. This is a uh, a nine to one gear ratio reel, super fast, and, and that's how you fish uh, lipless crankbaits. You're, you're, a lot of times you're, you're burning them really fast or you're jigging them, and with that high speed reel, you can actually, you can do a lot of the jigging with the reel itself. So the faster it is, the more you can do that. But uh, when it comes to lipless crankbaits for me, like I said, a high speed reel, and I'm gonna use 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon line or 30 to 50 pound braid when it comes to lipless crankbaits. It kind of depends if you're fishing them in vegetation. Uh, braided line really helps you uh, rip that bait out of there. But uh, the seven foot lipless cranking, uh, it's, it's an awesome setup as well. Everybody's got to love fishing lipless crankbaits. Like I said, it's all about the shad color. Shad's a big key on that. And that's what the deal is. The fish are following shad. Usually this time of year, you have massive balls of shad that'll get up on flats and points. And especially they migrate it great into these creeks. So a crankbait is a great way to catch them. Like I said, it's, it's fall, so it's basically all about the shad. Let's go fishing.